Back in the early 1800s, the English sailing ships sailed past the Great Barrier Reef on their way to the Spice Islands in the north. Sometimes the superstitious sailors on board would see terrifying creatures following their boats in the strong currents. Sea monsters with strange wings over five metres wide and a gaping mouth that could easily swallow a sailor's head or shoulders in a single gulp. They call these animals devil fish. Now today's story is sponsored by Kess Gallery. They have the most amazing aerial photography of the Sydney region. To find the devil fish, we venture offshore. Here, sailing ships sometimes tear open their hulls on the coral bomboras. But shipwrecks make for perfect marine habitats. A huge shape comes towards me from the depths, swirling around me like some alien eagle. It is Manta Barostris. Mantas can be massive, sometimes exceeding 300 kilograms in weight. They use the cephalic lobes to channel tiny fish and plankton into their enormous mouth. Filtering tissues trap the food and the water is then expelled from the enormous gills on the underside of the body. The amazing patterns on their backs and the spots on their bellies are as unique as our fingerprints. Mantas are highly evolved intelligent creatures. A huge black manta appears. Swirling around and showing off his enormous body and swimming talents for our cameras. More and more mantas arrive. Some hover behind coral heads, content to just watch me. I promised you I would dance with the devil. Now is my chance. So we've come here, Lady Elliot Island, a little coral cay on the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef. The pristine coral reefs here support a huge diversity of marine animals, and the giant devilfish are frequently seen. Hopefully, we will come face to face with the monstrous creatures that we so passionately want to film. Like the Solomon Islands, there are wrecks here too at Lady Elliot. The Severance has only been on the seabed for six years. But many species of fish, 
now call it home. Snapper and Sweet Lips take shelter under the bough. A very rare shovel-nosed shark lays half buried in the sand, hoping for a tasty lobster to come by. He puts up with my gentle stroking. Then, to parts into the blue. By using pigment cells in their skin, giant groper camouflage themselves. One this size can ambush and swallow a small shark in a single gulp. Further along the reef, we find caves with resident nurse shark. Nocturnal hunters that can literally suck lobsters and octopus into their crushing jaws. curious octopus leaves its coral lair and momentarily attaches itself to me. It panics and I'm consumed in a cloud of ink. I film a bull stingray as it explodes from the sand. And another one glides past with a whiptail ray hovering over its wide back. Behaviour I have never before filmed. The bull ray becomes annoyed at my presence and buries himself. His powerful body causes an undersea sandstorm. I'm cautious of the lethal barbed tail but managed to encourage him to swim once more for my camera. Well, we've dived the shipwreck and the beautiful coral reefs here at Lady Elliot Island and experienced a wonderful diversity of marine life. But we still haven't found the devil fish. So we're going to dive the coral bomboras that sit out on the sand in the strong current. And hopefully today we will find the creature
that we see. I descend once again to the sea floor and am delighted to encounter a huge loggerhead turtle, possibly over 150 kilograms in weight. These heavyweight turtles use their powerful jaws to crush up mollusks. His thick shell protects him from the harsh ocean environment, but a fully grown tiger shark could easily crunch through his armour. I can only guess the age of this old warrior. shape appears from the blue. A devilfish swims past my cameraman Mark Mountain and comes directly towards me. And back into the blue. I swim to the top of a coral bommy and hope he will return. Then, spirit-like, another devilfish appears before us. Early sailors called these giants devilfish because they mistook the cephalic lobes on the front of the head to be horns. We know these animals as Manta barostris. Giant mantas are cousins to the shark, but harmless to man. They corral planktonic crustaceans and small fish into the wide terminal mouth with their cephalic lobes. Filtering tissue traps food and water is discharged out the wide gills on the underside of the body. Below me, two more mantas hover over the seabed, then glide up to inspect me. These giant creatures may well be the most intelligent of fish. Scientists have discovered the brain size of the manta rivals that of a marsupial. The blood capillaries surrounding the large brain even supply blood at a temperature above ambient. An even larger manta arrives massive animal, possibly five metres wide and weighing over 800 kilograms. The spots on their underbellies are as individual as our fingerprints. Why these huge animals are so inquisitive is a mystery. Possibly their behaviour is an indication of their superior intelligence over other fish and sharks. A magnificently patterned female comes to investigate my presence. The male closely shadows her. He mimics her every move. 
I mean all of these graceful, mysterious creatures as they dance before our cameras. Little research has been done on the reproduction of mantis, but we do know they only bear one live young at a time and have been hunted to local extinction in some countries for their flesh. mariners feared the mantis and associated them with the devil, when in fact they are intelligent, highly developed marine predators that add beauty and wonder to our ocean world. Every week we will publish a new Wildlife Man podcast. So if you enjoy, please subscribe. Please share, like, and ring that notification button so you never miss a new story being published. And remember, all my films are available streaming on demand from Vimeo. So that's it from me till next week. I am your wildlife man.